What's going on everybody? Welcome back to this episode of G4 Outdoors. Today we're going to do an unboxing of the brand new 60 volt max Toro string trimmer. Well, here's a little story about two friends that came together And we started up a YouTube just to talk about whatever We're on a boat catching big bass and smashing them cats From review videos to just making you laugh Cause we got guns, we got knives, we got fishing, we got hunting We got everything you like, so hit that subscribe button We're in the outdoors, doing things that we love We're talking guitars, girls, green grass, and guns So gas-powered string trimmers have really been all that everybody's ever known in string trimmers but in the battery powered world, string trimmers have really advanced. Start, they started out with like a 18 volt, maybe 20 volt, you know, not a lot of power. But as time goes on, it's only been a couple years, these things have really evolved. And you may be thinking, why would I want to go with a battery over gas? Well, one reason right now is so you don't have the 8.30 in the morning neighbors out here running their gas powered equipment you can bring out your battery powered equipment. It's a lot quieter. Uh, you may be on the earth friendly kind of page to where you're not emitting all those uh, gases from your gas trimmer. So a battery powered option is a good way to go on that. Mm, you can debate the electricity part of it, being plugged in, power plants, whatnot, blah, 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 blah. So even though gas powered still has its place in the industry, I'm gonna wait till he's finished edging. So anyways, the gas still has its place in the lawn care industry, especially with the lawn care professionals. But as the homeowner, the battery powered equipment is really coming into the scene. And it's starting to be a lot more feasible of an option for a lot of people to own and purchase. Like with the string trimmer here, the starting price on this is $200, $199. Uh, that comes with the battery and charger. You can buy this without the battery and charger for $139. A good thing about that is you can buy the string trimmer, the blower, the hedge trimmers, snow blower, lawn mower, chainsaw. You can buy all those and just keep one battery for all of those units and you're saving a lot of money. So if you bought this without the battery pack, it would be $139. If you already purchased another unit for $200, say your hedge trimmers, for $200 and it came with the battery and battery charger, you can use that battery in this. So throughout the day, when you're doing your lawn chores, you can do your weed eating, you can do your hedge trimming, you can blow off your property. If you've got a couple of limbs out of the trees that you need to cut down, you could probably do that with one battery. Uh, you might need two batteries for that. I'm not sure on that. I'm gonna go into testing on all of these products and tools. So we'll find out the longevity of how long those batteries last later on in the season. But let's get to unboxing this. I wanna quickly go over some specs on this because there are different run times on this. It is a 60 volt system. 60 volts gonna give you a lot of torque. Currently on the system, what you're gonna see is a lot of 40 volts. I use the 40 volts. I actually blow off my property with a, with a 40 volt. And it's the 40 volt is very equivalent to a gas powered blower, uh, a fairly decent gas powered blower. But on the uh, 60 volt system here on the string trimmer, I've, I've got a pretty big steel string trimmer. I don't think that this is going to equivalent itself to that. I could be wrong because I haven't tested this yet. But uh, as far as torque, I think that this might keep up with it. But as far as productivity, I'm not sure of that. But we will find out. I will be doing a review on this shortly after this video but the run times on this you're going to get 50 minutes 45 minutes and 30 minutes and that's going to depend on your string size and the swath of your pattern so you can either do a 14 inch swath or a 15 inch swath you can also use a 0 0.080 line all the way up to a 0 0.095 line now the 0 080 line that's a really thin line uh, that's really good for your fine grass if you don't have overgrown fence lines or whatnot. I myself prefer to use the .095. It's thicker, it does a lot of damage, and uh, I'm the kind of guy that likes to weed eat every second or third mow. So yeah, my, the weeds around my property, they're a little bit thicker and a little bit taller than a lot of the others. So if you're string trimming your property every third time, you may want to step up into the thicker line. But on the 50 minutes, you can use the thin line at 14 inches. That'll give you 50 minutes of runtime. That is a lot of weed eating. Uh, you can run the 0 .095 line at 14 inches for 45 minutes. 
Now that's still a lot of runtime, 45 minutes. If you think about it, how long it takes you to weed eat your property, when you're running gas powered, the gas motor is turned on all the time. So when you're walking around your property, you know it's running all the time. With the battery powered string trimmer, the only time you're using it is when you're pulling the trigger. So if you run from a tree to tree, it's shut off during that time that took you to get from one tree to the other. And then the only time you're using it is when you pull the trigger. So if you think about it, 45 minutes is a very long time. Uh, if you run the .095 at 16 inches, well, that's a 16 inch swath, and that's a pretty good cut pattern, that'll run you up to 30 minutes. And still again, think about that 30 minutes. When you're running, let's just say you're running one flower bed. That's all that you run that flower bed for. Now, if that was on a gas mower, the motor is still on until you get to your next project. So 30 minutes is actually going to be a lot of time for this. I'm not going to sit here and pretend like I actually know what the 2.5 amp hours or 135 watt hours actually translates into. I just know that that means it's more runtime. Now, as with all battery powered equipment, everything is running into the brushless motors. And with this, you have the DC brushless motor. Uh, what I like about this is this motor is in the head and that's going to give you a lot better balance from the battery and the head. Uh, they used to have the motors up here and so you had a battery and a motor up here and all the weight was back here and they were really awkward and not really balanced and hard to handle so I like that the motor is up here in the head. And that's actually going to give you a lot better durability being up in there in the head. That way you don't have a shaft running through here that's spinning a whole bunch of greasable points or whatnot. It's a lot better being up here in the head. Another thing that I like about this head is that it does have a quick feed head on it. Now this is a feature that is really nice. This way you don't have to take the cap off, wind up your line onto there, clip it in, wind up another line, clip it in, put it on the head, try and line those up, and by that time your line has come unclipped and then it blows up. With the speed feed head, all you gotta do is pull your line through the head on this and then just wind it up and that string actually retracts into the head. So it's a really good feature on here. Uh, I think that really all string trimmers should have that on there. It's just a lot easier to run them that way and quicker. I already said it. Let's get to unboxing this. If I have your owner's manual, if you're feeling frisky. This does come in two pieces. We'll figure that out in a second. It does come with these really fun toys. That's always the best part of bubble wrap. There's more. You got your battery charger. You know what? This is your battery. You got your battery. This is a beefy piece of battery right here. It does have a battery indicator on the back. So we're down to one bar on this. I do need to slap this on the charger before I use it, but that's a pretty big battery. And for being as big as it is, this is not that heavy. Uh, I think my little 18 volt cordless drill battery weighs about this much. Yeah, that's super light. I can't wait to get this into the handle to see how this is. Uh, oh, I wish I knew the weight on this, guys. This is this is really light. If you if you've he, if you've held the big batteries for these power equipment, usually these are a good twice the weight of this. All right, next we have a battery charger. Uh, simple battery charger. So just your standard battery charger right here. You're gonna have your charging, already charged, bad battery, and uh, temperature, I think, right there. And then this little light right here is gonna be your, your charge indicator. 
Also on the back, you are going to have wall mount options. Uh, looks like your standard length power cord. So, so you, well, here I'm just I'm unboxing this with you. It's got feet right here, so you can stand it up. You can lay it on the floor. A lot of options with this. I'm probably going to mount this on the wall. That seems like a lot better option. Uh, I think I'm seeing a fan right here, a cooling fan for charging as well. Another quality piece. And next comes with supplied tools to put this together. You're going to have your brush guard, your grass guard, and then we're going to have the mounting handle and I'm sure this is what ties everything together. So let's put this together real quick. So to put this together, you're going to have a little detention pin right here. That, depend, that detention pin is going to slide up into there and lock into this position right here. A good thing about this and the way this is designed, if this is too tall for you to leave it up anywhere, you can take this apart each time uh, and then fold that over and you have a nice little compact unit. So it's kind of a neat design, but most of the time, not most of the time, I probably will leave this put together as one unit all the time. So take this detention pin and make sure that it clips into its spot right there. Take the supplied tool and go ahead and tighten your handle for this whole piece up. Now next on your handle right here, you want to going to take all of these screws out of here. So once you get these unscrewed and you get the bottom off, you're going to want to place this up here. You want the, uh, which way is up and which way is down. You're going to want to put this handle on top and then place the bottom plate back down on the bottom. And now you want to going to put this together and tighten these screws up. But do not tighten these screws up all the way. You want to find where this handle is comfortable. So just run the screws in here, get them just a little bit snug, and then I'll show you how to adjust this. Now once you have this slightly snug, you want it to be able to turn a uh, couple reasons. First of all, these are a booger to take on and off. They're uh, a little hard on the fingers and a little tight in the plastic. It's a good thing because it's not going to come loose in the long run. So anyways, now that this is just a little bit loose and installed, you're going to want to adjust this to where it's going to fit your body style. A uh, good rule of thumb is just stand up straight. And this is where you're going to want the handle somewhere in this area. So once you've reached a comfortable spot to where you're standing straight up and you can grab this handle, that's where you're going to want to tighten it down. And the reason why you want it up that far is because if you spend all day bending over while you're weed eating, it takes a toll on your back. So be sure and get this handle up here at a comfortable position to where you're not going to be bending over. Then you can go ahead and tighten it on down. Now you've got that installed. Let's move on to the, can you believe that turned on me? Now I got to loosen up and put it back over here. All right, now that you have the handle installed, let's get on to the uh, string trimmer guard. So here we have the trimmer guard and what this is going to do is keep the grass and debris from flying up in your face and it also determines your swath of your string. Uh, this does have a very sharp blade on here to cut your string off from keeping it from getting too long. Uh, like I say you can run this from 14 inches to 16 inches and let's take this blade off of here and I'll show you how to do that. So under here are two screws that you're going to want to take out. gas nine o'clock so once you got your two screws out of there you can see this is shaped in an, like an L bracket and if I can get that in there you can see the cutting blades on both sides I'm gonna wait for him to finish with the gas Okay, 
now that that's done. So you have this L-shaped bracket right here, and what this is gonna do, you can turn this around both ways. If you keep it like this, with the L-shaped this way, I'm sure it's backwards on film, so I'm not gonna say left or right. Uh, if you keep the cutting edge towards the inside like this, it's gonna be 14 inches. If you turn it around like this, you're gonna get 16 inches. So I'm gonna keep mine at 16 inches. I like the bigger swaths. So I'm gonna leave it at 16 inches, and now you put the screws back in. Same way if you wanted 14. If you wanted 14, leave it with the blade cutting side in, put your screws in, 16 inches, blade cutting side out, and put your screws back in. All right, now we got that installed. Now let's install this onto the string trimmer. So to put this on, it's gonna be a pretty easy process. You have two black screws down here that you're going to want to take out. Next, you're going to, going to take your safety guard, put this on the bottom just like so, line up the little bolt holes. Now, I haven't said don't over tighten anything yet. On these screws right here that hold your string trimmer guard onto the head of the motor, do not over tighten these because this is an aluminum product right here and these are steel steel and aluminum don't mix this is a lot harder than aluminum so if you tighten it down too much you will strip the threads out so just put a snug tightness on these screws <laughs> are you guys seeing what i'm doing that's just silly make sure you're putting it on the right way <laughs> like i say you do not want to over tighten these bolts down here on the bottom you definitely don't want to strip one of those out once it's stripped out you're done so now we have it all assembled this does come pre-spooled with 0.095 line in it. Uh, heavy duty nylon string line. Uh, it looks like fairly good string. It looks like it's doing a good job. We'll find that out here in a bit. Anyway, so far without a battery, you see how the head falls down like that and it's not balanced very well. Let's balance it up. You wanna take your battery and just slide it right on, just like that, easy to go. Now, as you can see, the balance of it is way better. And a lot of that has to do where I have the handle. If I had the handle down here just a little bit further, perfectly balanced. Uh, first thoughts. I could move that handle down just a little bit to get a little bit more balance down towards the bottom and and that that will make a big difference on where you have this handle so make sure you have that set up to where it's comfortable for you i'm probably going to move that down just a little bit sacrifice just a little bit of back comfort for a little bit more balance uh, the handle on it the handle the handle is rubberized this handle right here uh, there's a couple little groove sections on it I'd like to see a solid mold all the way around that, but I don't think that that's, being as it's rubber and not plastic, it's not gonna put a hot spot on your hand as quick, I don't think. Uh, as far as the safety switch, that's just natural. Uh, if you're gonna pull the trigger, your hand's gonna be there and depressing the safety switch anyway, so no big deal on the safety switch. As far as the trigger, the trigger is fine. It's not heavy, it's not light, it's just a, a continuous trigger so the trigger feels really good as far as the handle for this gripping handle right here uh, it's plastic on top but it is rubberized on the inside so you have a lot of comfort there uh, as far as comfort on it the this handle right here is comfortable on the underside there is a molding line I'm probably going to grind down with a with a uh, little piece of sandpaper 
if you've got a fingernail file that would work just fine just to knock down this little groove uh, it, it's a mold line it's on just about every piece of equipment you own but you don't realize it until you start using things and realize there's some sharp edges on here that could be polished up just a little bit no big deal that's a personal personal preference if it bugs you sand it down if it doesn't leave it alone but as far as both of these handles combined it's a pretty comfortable unit i gotta say i do have a dewalt system not to throw any other names out there uh it's a 40 volt and it's way heavier than this 60 volt and what the 60 volts going to do like i say it's going to give you more power so you have a lighter unit with more power and like i say with the power unit being up here on the head that's going to save a lot of energy on the string trimmer itself because all of your power is right here it's not being transferred from here to here it's all right here in the head where it's supposed to be where all the work is being done so really nice unit I can't tell you that is extremely quiet. Uh, this is probably quieter than that gas powered one that was clear across the street. What I'm actually hearing is the string and not the motor. That's. Yeah, definitely. It's the string that you're hearing, not the actual motor. Little bit of motor, but most of that is just the string whipping the air. This thing is super quiet. Uh, to bump some string out of the head, all you got to do is power this up and bump it on the ground. And if you heard that little brrr, that was the string cutting itself on that blade. So you can see right here, this is where it, where you at? This right here is where that string grabbed a hold of that blade and it cut it down to 16 inches. And that's not 16 inches here, guys. That's a... That's a total swath from tip to tip. That's a 16 inch swath. And that's where I'm going to run it because I, like I like to mow down a lot, of, a lot of footage at once. But man, you know what I can't get over is how light this actually is compared to the older, older units. So guys, that's the 60 volt string trimmer by Toro. I would like to give a huge shout out to Toro for the shirt and sending this product out here for me to do a review on. If you wanna see this thing in action, stick around because I will be using this later on today. But anyways, I hope that this unboxing helped you out. I hope it made you made some decisions. If you just bought this and wanted to know how to put it together, I hope I helped you out a little bit. But anyways, guys, if you liked the video, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, leave a comment down below. I will see you in the next one. Just I'm out. Go away. Now you see fishing ain't a habit. It's a passion in my souls. When I'm casting and I'm smashing all these bass that are on my pole. Now for a minute or an hour. If I'm fishing, then I'm fine. I just only need a second when I'm wetting up a line. So if the weather's super crappy or you might be stuck inside, search G4 Outdoors YouTube online. But as I look up and I ask.